Okay, this is the stuff movie watching vlogs. It is now March 2012, and I'm gonna give you a complete rundown of all the movies that I saw in February. Now, this is gonna be a short one, and not because February was a short month, I just didn't watch a whole lot. Too much Skype, too much gaming, too much Breaking Bad and Sopranos. Also, I decided I'm not going to give you the dates. I'm just going to give you the movies and give you a quick review. Okay, so the first movie I saw in February was actually the last movie that I saw in January, and that's Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie. This time, I watched it with two friends, and while one of them was mildly amused, the other one pretty much hated it, and I haven't talked to that guy since, so I think that movie just basically ended my friendship with him. And I honestly can't blame him for hating it, because like I said before, it's a bizarre and very sick movie, but I still liked it, so I'm still gonna go 3 out of 5. The next film is from 1976, and it's called Who Can Kill a Child? It's actually a Spanish film that is about a British couple that ends up on an island that's inhabited by children, and that's about it. That's because the children have become a bunch of murdering psychopaths. This movie was quite the shocker in the 70s, but I gotta say it doesn't really hold up that well. It's a decent movie, it's entertaining, it's actually very well shot, it's interesting, but the uh, two main characters are pretty dumb, they make some pretty dumb decisions. The movie also has like a five minute opening credit sequence where they give you a bunch of archive footage of uh, children th that have died in wars and it's basically trying to say that the biggest casualty of war is children. It tries to be all socially relevant, but it doesn't really work. But it's a good movie, so I give it 3.5 out of 5. The next film has now won Best Picture for the Academy Awards, and I don't really agree with that. It's The Artist. It's a wonderful movie. I really, really enjoyed it. You can check out my review. It was definitely worthy of winning Best Picture. It's a wonderful film. I just think there were a few other films that should have been considered. Actually, they were considered, that's why they were nominated. Never mind. Then I saw the film Basic. I don't know if you remember that one, but that stars Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta. Kind of a mystery, a military mystery. I've always liked that movie. I think it's, uh, yeah, maybe a little cliche, maybe a little predictable, but it, it was a good movie. I, I liked it. I actually owned it. I watched it on my DVD. No visual aids today. I didn't really watch too many movies that I owned, so I wasn't going to gather everything up. But, um, it's a cool movie. I give that a 3.5. John Travolta is great in that movie. Then I saw Killer Elite with Jason Statham. And he does actually keep the show on for the most part of the movie, and of course he was pretty cool, he kicks a lot of ass, Clive Owen was cool, he played a good tough guy, Robert De Niro was good. I enjoyed it. It wasn't nothing special, but it had some good action, it was uh, suspenseful, entertaining. I liked it, so I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Okay, the next movie, uh, God, extremely loud and incredibly close. And I hope to never say that title again. I hope to never think of that movie again. I really did not like that movie, and you can check out my review right here. Then I saw a documentary called The Devil Came on Horseback. It's about a former Marine who documents the genocide in Darker. Very, very graphic documentary. It's very heartbreaking. But it's actually a very good documentary, so you should check that out. Next is The Nest, which is actually a French action thriller, kind of a remake of Assault on Precinct 13. It's basically about a couple of gangs and a police escort that end up in one warehouse and they're attacked by, you know, unknown assailants. Very good action movie. You should definitely check that out if you have Netflix. Well directed, and I think I will give it a 4 out of 5. Next is The Horseman. That's in Aust I think it's Australian. Yeah, it's Australian. It's a very graphic revenge thriller. It's about a father who goes after the pornographers that killed his daughter. If you like very bloody and graphic revenge thrillers, this is definitely one for you. It doesn't have any uh, known actors that I am aware of, but the acting is actually really good. The only bad thing is it's very shaky and everything, but it's an intense little movie. It was on Netflix, I think they took it down, but if you get to see <clears throat> don't know what happened to The Horseman, check it out, I give it a 4 out of 5. The next movie I saw, I will show you this, because I saw it on VHS for the first time. Hell Razor. I've never seen this movie. This is actually my friend, the same friend that I tortured with Tim and Eric. This is his film. I've never seen it. 
And I don't know why, because this is a pretty dope-ass horror film. The gore effects are insane, and it was a... I like this movie. I want to see this again. This is... It's some good shit. That would give that a 4 out of 5. Then I saw War Horse, and uh, I liked it. I thought it was terrific, very old-fashioned, a little bit sappy, but very entertaining, very well filmed. I haven't done a review for that one yet, but I think I'm going to wait till the Blu-ray comes out and do a Blu-ray review. But uh, I did like it. I'm not going to give you a rating because I'm still thinking about what I thought about it. Mostly because the relationship between that kid and that horse it's kind of fishy. I mean, that guy, he was just a little bit too much into that horse. Then I saw a movie, it was actually a TV movie, a mini series called Hitler, The Rise of Evil. Came out, I think, in 2002 or 2003. I never saw it, uh, so I rented it, and it was okay. But very drawn out, the first half was a lot better than the second. Albert Carlyle plays Hitler, and he does a good job, but he's, I've seen better. And it's a TV movie, so it's really quite corny, and it's very safe, you know? So I would give that a 3 out of 5. Then I saw The Descendants, and I loved it, and I should review it. But I'm probably going to wait till the Blu-ray comes out, so no waiting yet. But I would have loved to have seen that one best picture. Then I saw Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey. First time I've ever seen it. Such a fantastic movie. I'm not a big Jim Carrey fan, but that movie, he, you can tell he just lost himself in that character. It was very funny, very awkward. I enjoyed it a lot. I definitely gotta get that one, so I would give that a 4 out of 5. Then I saw Hugo, and I absolutely, positively love that film. I think that should have won Best Picture. With that being said, you probably would know what my rating is, but I'm not going to give it because I'm going to try to get that on Blu-ray and review it. Next movie I saw was World's Greatest Dad with Robin Williams, and it's directed by Bobcat Goldfleet. Very awkward, very odd movie, but I loved it. It's basically about a dad's son who dies in a very awkward way and he covers it up to make it look like suicide and he's actually a writer and he writes his son's fake suicide note very funny very odd too so i'll give that a four out of five and i saw the movie hostage with bruce willis this was actually one of those dvds that I'm, i showed off in that one video where i saw all the stuff that i have owned and never opened i've seen it before i like that movie it's uh this is funny too. But when I finished watching it, I actually put it back in its case and I looked at it and I'm like, this is a good once in a blue moon kind of movie. And after I finished it, my friend came over, we talked, he, I told him what movie I watched. He said, yeah, yeah, that's a good once in a blue moon kind of movie. I just thought that was kind of funny. It also has a very creepy Ben Foster. I like it. I give it a 3 out of 5. Actually, 3.5 out of 5. I, I don't know. 3 out of 5, how was it? But no, 3.5. Bruce Willis is good in that movie. It's very cliche. I don't care, 3.5. The last movie I saw... Ugh. 1911. It stars Jackie Chan. It's directed by Jackie Chan. And it was a good mistake. It's about the Chinese Revolution. I... Just, it, it was so dark, I couldn't even finish it. I just did a review on that, so check that one out, and you'll know exactly how I feel. Alright, so that's about it, and a uh, quick little, quick little thing I want to mention. Since this is a vlog, I figured this is a good time to mention it. Grinch the Hooligans. This was another DVD that was in that video. It was unopened. I recently opened it. I was going to watch it the other night, and the goddamn thing does not fucking play. I right, so anyway, that's about it. Uh, I'll see you guys next month. Well, at least with this segment, I'll try to do some stuff this month, some other stuff. And I also want to thank all those who have been coming into my blog TVs. I recently started doing blog TVs. Uh, my good friend Jesse, he got me a webcam and he dared me to do blog TV, so I started doing them. I'm going to try to do more. Uh, I'm going to try to be as fun as I possibly can. Just try to give you guys a good reason to come in. And I just want to give a few shoutouts to a few people. They know why. Shipper War, Bamboo Productions, Fury of the Thunk Fan, Romero Movie News, Japanic, and Bright Eyes Long Live. You guys are the best, you got my back, and I got yours. I'm Pop Coach Diva, gotta throw you in there. Alright, y'all, peace.